and you're you're talking about how they can help you. So you started out pretty good where you said you're a hard worker and things like that. You want to talk more about can, can I how... can I say something? Go ahead. Yeah, I think um what I mean, it's all good and stuff, but I think what they want to hear is like how can you make the company bigger and what right. what benefit can they get out of it? You know what I'm saying? Yes. And it's yes. like um I'm not sure what uh what exact cuz I came came in a little late. So um uh, I don't know what the job is, but um, from my experience, they always want to know how you can make the team, you know, I mean, uh, the nice. company bigger and stuff like that. So I yeah. always say like, because um, I'm a, I'm a team player. So if I'm a team player, um, I'm always giving positive feedback to my, my teammates or whatever I got, whatever my professional skills are, it's what I can give back, you know, um, like I would like to get into the first response ambulance thing, but I know you need a GED and I'm not, I don't have a GED. So, I mean, that's what's holding me back. I have just a little bit of experience in, in home, uh, taking, cause I took care of my mother, but I don't have too much experience, but I mean, that's, some, that's something that comes out of me naturally. So, um, I can give, you know, um, how would I say it? Um, whatever they need from me, I'm going to, you know, give back, uh, willingly to, you know, uh, because I love to help people, you know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. a passion that I have, right. but I think that's what they want to hear, what you can give to them. And I mean, uh, it's whatever individual has, you know, whatever gifts they have, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yes. Good morning. Good go. morning. <laughs> Good morning, April. Um, Hi, yes. I, I just wanted to, um, not to cut either of you off, but um, I was listening and um, I was trying not to interrupt, but um, something that you can say that's generic just to start so that you have an excellent rebuttal would be, you would be an amazing asset to their company because yes. you bring forth amazing customer service skills. Everything that you said, but wording is everything. Yeah, I've worked exactly, in abundant exactly. years in human resources and you have to give to gab and sell yourself. And even if you exactly, don't have every basically. skill, you kind of fake exactly. it till you make it. It's, this this so, is why it's perfect. Yeah, you, you just you say- practice. Mm -hmm. You're an amazing asset to their company. You are a team player. You bring forth your excellent customer service skills. You have no conflicts within your schedule so that you can be completely available and you are extremely flexible, which lets them know that you're able to do what they ask and then tell them you're a multitasker and you're here to learn. Keyword, you're exactly. here to learn well said. what exactly. they get have any of those words you. out right now. <laughs> 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 well but my brain was just like it was yes. rambling da, 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 da. but at, at the moment I couldn't think of anything so you know this is why it's great for these come I mean for these workshops because you can get a piece of paper out and this is what I'm going to say you know right. you can yeah. play uh yeah. you know have it all together but I mean you you well put thank you yes thank you. and thank you both I couldn't have said it better <laughs> yes <laughs> me yeah. either one other thing that we want to say that I do always say to everyone when I uh, talk about uh, interviewing is think about five wonderful things that you've done in your job, any job. Think about five wonderful stories. Remember those great stories and when they ask you the questions, you can actually use those to respond. Because remember, they want to know what, what the situation was what the action was and what the result was when they're asking you these questions. Okay. Yeah, you also want to highlight your experience and, and make it applicable to the position that you're applying for. Yes. So okay. if you guys are applying for a specific position, you want to make sure that you have experience <clears throat> applicable to that position and highlight that mm -hmm. and, and talk about that. So make sure that you're selling yourself in a way that makes you applicable for the position. Because if you don't have experience or any relatable skills to the position, then mm -hmm. you, know, you might not be considered for the position. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So you really want to be able to, to as uh, April was saying, sell yourself. Sell yourself the best. And to do that, you want to take the best of what you've ever done in your career and use that to explain who and what you've done. Okay. okay. I got it. I got it. 
Thank you, ladies. You're amazing. You're welcome. Um, lastly, <laughs> what I have learned at a new interview, companies are also looking to ask you um, not trick questions, but they want to see that you want to grow. So here's a question that I got. What give me two things that you're great at? Give me two things that you're not so great at. So find some qualities that are minor and tell them that, you know, with your company, I'd like to work on and then use those two things or three things that you're not so great at and tell them that you'd like their leadership to help you be empowered and perfect whatever it is as well. Just Thanks. a small suggestion, but someone asked me that at a recent interview and I have an interview tomorrow. So I was kind of Thank baffled. You. Thank you so much. I'll take all this into account. And research the companies you're going to be uh, interviewing for. You wanna uh -huh. have some as much information on them as you can as well, so that you're able to talk to them about different things that pertain to your uh, position that you're applying for. Okay, um, so um, I, I would like to interrupt and, uh, and add a little in two cents on that. Sure. <laughs> what, I, what I always do is wow. um, I always ask the companies if they can tell me a little bit more about them, even if I didn't research the company. You know, that just gets them to like, Oh, she really wants to know about us. She really wants to grow with us. And yeah, you know, that's maybe, true. Yeah, yeah, maybe she's, you know, really interested in the position that she's applying for with us. And it, it gets them wanting to know more about you. And then that way they'll probably, I've always been brought aboard when I ask those questions, you mm -hmm. know, um, asking them their history and their okay. company with, and yeah, what that, assets can they point. bring to the table as well. Mm -hmm. that's smart perfect really? thank you all uh we this, this this particular workshop is about enhancing your skills and education but part of that is also talking about uh interviewing and how do you sell yourself into the positions that you're looking for and how do you create the pathway to get to your uh, positions that you are looking for. So um, with having said that, we'll have further discussion a little bit further on down the line after we go through this PowerPoint. It's a pretty okay. short PowerPoint, but we do have a number of different things that we will be discussing along the way. So without further ado, let can you all see the screen to begin with? Yes. yes. So we have the workshop today, and then tomorrow we have Accent Care, uh, this is uh, IHSS and uh, caregivers and um, home health aid uh, employers. They are looking to hire. <clears throat> and then, uh, as Monica, a segue, can I, is that the one with the GD? Yes. Okay. But we will work on looking at the GD for you. Okay. Uh, after uh, what I want you to do is email me, and then we'll mm. go from there. Okay. Okay, and then thank you. as a segue for uh, from this one is tips for a positive interview. And that one is on Thursday at 11 a.m. Okay. Okay, thank you. So let's start off with enhancing your skills and education. What we're going to learn today is how to access your current career and identify the opportunities. We're also going to be looking at how to move forward using your SMART goals and where to find support and resources, okay? So uh, exploring your career options. Um, activities to help you determine the career path. As we were talking about earlier, uh, when we were discussing the uh, interviewing component, we talked about researching the fields and the acts and assess, and assess current trends and future outlooks. So what are your career dreams? What are you looking to do in your career? Somebody was talking about the EMT. And so for that, you want to research the field. You want to see what is required of you to get to that field. Uh, let's say you do need your, uh, your GED. But in the meantime, while you're getting to your GED, can you do other uh, courses, other trainings to get you to a place 
Where mm -hmm. once you get your GED, you're ready to go. Are you working in other fields? There are drivers. Did you get your drive the, the right driving license? Do you have the right, um, you know, the CPR? Do you have some of the other uh, components that don't require the GED yet? So look at that. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about exploring your career options. How do you start to get closer to that? Volunteering volunteering at different uh, places regarding your career choice. When I came to San Diego, I was looking to work in the nonprofit field. In order to do that, I joined a number of different uh, committees. And when I was in those committees, I would volunteer to provide information or workshops on finance, on um, home, low, low income housing, on different low income housing pro programs and how they worked. What this did was open up my, open me up so that everyone could see what I knew. <clears throat> and what would happen, what was happening then was people were coming to me asking me for work, uh, to work for them. Okay, because they could see that I knew what I was talking about. I knew what I was doing. And uh, they wanted me to work for, with them, okay? So think about volunteering. What do you, if you wanna work at a, at a, as a, at a vet hospital, uh, at, at a veterinarian, do you wanna go and volunteer at the pet shelter? Do you wanna go and see about uh, working at a pet store? How do you get yourself involved in the career that you're looking for so that you know the ins and outs of it? Participating in informational interviews is really great. What does that mean? If you wanna become a social worker or a work readiness specialist like ourselves, I had, I've had um, some uh, individuals come to me and interview me and ask me what I like about my job. How did I get here? What did it, what it took to get to where I am? And what, what about the uh, job do I find rewarding? And what are some of the downfalls? So there are uh, individuals in different professions that are willing to do interviews and talk to you about the job and what it entails. So think about that as well. I mean, the more you get involved in exploring your career options and the dream job that you want, the better it is for you uh, as you start moving towards it. It may also tell you that you may not be interested in this job after all, and you're looking at a different type of job within the same field. So this is why it's so important. Following companies you're interested in on social media, like Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, connect to them, uh, become part of their uh, social media and get to know what they have there. They will actually offer you positions there or you will see when positions open and what positions within the field you're interested in and see how they work for you. Okay, uh, you also are, are you qualified for the position that you're interested in? Is it something that you are, that you have all the needed qualifications for? Do you have the passion for it? Is it something that you're really willing to do? Because here's the thing, you don't wanna get into a field and then find that you really don't like it. After spending all this time to get there, then realizing, you know what, this isn't really something I wanted to do after all. <laughs> so you want to go ahead and look to see what this particular field entails. What are you going to be required to do? For example, I don't like sales. I've always said I don't like sales, yet every job requires that you have some salesmanship in you, right? If you're going to be a CNA, you want to be able to talk your client into getting up off the bed, helping them move around, helping them do what they need to do. And in order to, do, you have to, they have to have confidence in you and believe that you're there to help them, right? That's still salesmanship. So think about all this when it comes to also selling yourself and selling who you are and what you're willing to do for your job and the career you want to follow, okay? Look at your current qualifications. Are you qualified for your position at this time? Yes. Are you already employed in the position? Are you looking to promote within 
the agency, what will it require that you, that you do to get there? If you're not qualified, do you need additional education? Do you need additional technical skills? Uh, do you need additional experience? You know, there are different ways for you to acquire experience. Some people aren't willing to work with uh, temp agencies, but temp agencies provide you with additional experience that you would not have acquired had you just gone into a job without working it. And it also gives you the opportunity to realize if you really wanna continue in this line of work or if you wanna change it to something else before you spend too much time trying to uh, create that career that may not work down the line, okay? What we want is for you to be happy in the position and in the career choice that you make so that it does become a dream job and not just a job. Because let's face it, if it's just a job, you're not going to excel at that job. You excel when you have the passion, when you have the love, when you have the, the want to do it. If it's not something you really have a passion for, it's just going to be a place that you go to every day. Okay. How do you create the plan if you are not there yet? We've talked in the past about SMART goals, you know, and determining what those SMART goals are is um, where you want to go. So remember that a SMART goal is specific. Remember that a SMART goal is specific. It is measurable. It is attainable. It is relevant and it is time bound. It's de dedicated to time to work. It dedicates time to working towards your goal every day. And it keeps an accurate tracking system for your results. So for that person that indicated they wanted to be an EMT, let's say that you've decided that you want to be an EMT by the end of the year. Now that's giving you a set time frame so that it's just not up in the air. What it does is it brings you to a place where it kind of creates a, a time where you have to focus more readily on your goal, okay? So if you wanna do this by the end of the year, then you wanna be an EMT by the end of the year. And to do that, you're going to need to take your GED courses by within three months, right? And you're going to need to have your CPR, and your other requirements completed within the next six months. So that by the end of the year, you are out uh, sending out resumes to acquire your goal, okay? If we have specific timelines set up, it kind of holds us accountable to completing them in a timely manner. Whereas if we leave it open, it's just there, but we're not actually moving towards it. Focusing on your goals helps you focus on achieving your dream job. Become, to become employment ready once you've reached your goals is updating your resume as we were talking about earlier, updating your list of professional references. Make sure that the persons that you are asking to be references, agree to it, know that you've asked that and are able to respond when they are being asked uh, for a reference, okay? You don't know how many times I've had uh, somebody call me and say that one of my clients asked to put me down as a reference. However, I wasn't aware that I was being put down uh, as a reference and in what capacity I was put down for as a reference. So sometimes I get thrown off guard and it's really hard to respond where you're not sure what that reference uh, entails or what is it they're requiring of me in terms of the reference. So make sure that you let those people know. It's really, really important. Practice interviewing skills. As you saw earlier today, when we were going through this little um, exercise with John C, we were 
asking her to practice her skills. We were asking her to think about how she was going to be an asset to that company. Thinking about ways that she was going to be able to promote a better environment for the job, for the uh, agency, how her skills were going to make the agency better. That's what we were asking her to think about. We, as, as, a, as a person or me, in, 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 talking about me myself, I have a hard time selling myself. It's really hard for me to speak about all of my accolades, even though some of my coworkers will tell me that I have all these great you know, things that I can talk about. I forget. I have to write them down. I have to put them on paper. And then I have to really think about how I want to say them. So it's important for you to really practice your interviewing skills. Think about all of the um, great things you've done in your career and bring them out at the time when they're most important. So we ask that you really work and practice your interviewing skills. Uh, we do offer mock interviews for anyone that needs uh, to have that practice. I will tell you that all of my colleagues and myself are more than willing to do that. And, and we look for times when we're able to do it. Even when our schedules are busy as they are now, we try to help John C with her um, interviewing for the next couple of days. Okay. Get help from others. Okay. Tell people about your career goals. Uh, network with people you know and ask for introductions to people they know. So you don't know how, when, when, uh, how important it is to get to know individuals within the same field that you're trying to get into. When I was trying to get into the, the nonprofit sector, it was truly important for me to network and talk to different people, have them get to know who I was. They introduced me to other people who then introduced me to other sectors. And I was able to enter into different committees that allowed me to then become more known in the field that I do now. So this is very important, especially in smaller uh, cities such as San Diego where everyone knows everyone. Join professional organizations in your desired fields. Attend events hosted by the professionals in your desired fields. Find mentors, you know, people that are already doing this that can help you. Uh, I have a, a friend, uh, well, it's not, she, I can say she's a friend. In one of my events that I went out to a training event, I met someone in tech that, that was from Texas and she acquired a position, kind of like what I'm doing now, and she emailed me and said, you know what? I'm having a hard time acclimating myself to this position. There's so much data entry. There's so much work. I, I, there's so much multitasking involved. I, I'm lost and I'm falling behind. So I took the time to talk to her about getting herself under control by doing things ahead of time, setting up schedules of knowing when she had to do certain things and little by little uh, starting to enter all of that data prior to when it was required to be done. For her not to wait for the last minute, for her to set up certain, you know, so I gave her a lot of information on how to get herself set up so that she was able to work more effectively within the type of work that we do. And I just talked to her maybe a week or so ago and all of the information that I gave her, she took to heart. She implemented it, and now she's doing way better under un, in her uh, job. And they're actually thinking of promoting her. And that's because she stopped and asked somebody for help. Okay? You can also work with us, and we'll try to help you. And if we can't help you, we'll find individuals or places or, or websites that can help you. Okay? Here are a few of the uh, career exploration resources. Uh, OneNet is a wonderful tool that we use a lot. We refer our clients to uh, Career One Stop, U.S. Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics. I will uh, show you a little bit about of how that web website looks uh, like in just a little bit. I pulled it up so that we can I could show it to you. Uh, there's a number of other uh, job search resources. 
indeed jobbing, you know, NP works is uh, nonprofit works. That's uh, where you go to look for nonprofit jobs. Uh, Beyond Jobs, Linked, Monster, all of these are just a number of different uh, types of uh, sources that we have out there, okay? Um, I wanted also to provide you with information on our, uh, on the, on the website that I was talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and show you the occupational outlook. This is the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. Can you all see this? Yes. Perfect. And so you can see right here that it talks about architectural engineering, arts, business, community, education. But the one that they have right here is a featured occupation cost estimator. You see that? It's telling you the cost estimator collection and analysis data in order to estimate the time. And so it gives you a profile of this job. You see, it tells you that they make anywhere between, almost up to $66,000 per year. And it can pay up to, and this is the medium pay up to $32 an hour. It requires a bachelor's degree, uh, work experience in the related occupation. There isn't any, but it talks to you about how to become one. So here's the education, the trainings, uh, and the uh, environment. Okay, it offers all of the different information that you may need, uh, job outlooks, you know, perspectives, it, it talks about state and area information, uh, what, what they do, you know, so there's just so much information on this particular site. And it also talks about similar occupations. So let's say that you're an accountant. An accountant can easily di divert whatever skills they have to that particular job skill. Claim adjuster, budget analyst, construction manager, financial analyst, financial manager. You can see all of these different areas that uh, do a similar type of job, okay? And so I wanted you to see this because it's really good that you're able to uh, see what these websites that we provide for you offer. And sometimes it's so much information it's just taking the time to look and see what's out there. Chiropractors. Let's say uh, this is um, management. Okay. And here's all the different types of management jobs and the medium income for them and the requirements when it comes to all the different job options. Emergency management director you know, financial managers. And it talks about on-job training. There isn't any a work experience, but how to become one. Associates of Government Accounting, Certified Government Financial Management. It gives you all of these different public accounting, American Institute of Public Accountants, where you can be part of the, that board and then get in through there. You know, there's different options for you to look at. So having said that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And we're gonna talk about about what we've discussed. Uh, do you have any questions? Anyone? Okay. All right. No, I think I think you said everything. <laughs> so did you did you understand on the EMT what we were talking about and some of the options you may have in order for you to start moving towards that career? Yeah. Um I did understand it and um I, I feel you on that that you know you have the more you uh try to you know, achieve your goals, you, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're setting up yourself for, you know, your career more. 
Right. And I think, for example, if you want to do or achieve something, <laughs> I think that if you set yourself up with a timeline, you're actually <clears throat> creating uh, what, we, what we call accountability on our end. Oh, shoot. I said I was going to do this by this date and I haven't done it yet. So let me start moving on this and this so I can get there. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Versus it just being an open slate. This is what I want to do. Okay. So what are the steps you've taken so far to get there? Right? Yeah, I, I yeah, I understand that. I usually do that a lot because sometimes I get overwhelmed with the kids and you know, with, especially with this homeschool stuff, you know, it's um, it, I'm, my kids are really giving me a hassle, you know, and that's one thing I'm really trying to um, overcome because you know, the kids they're, they're sleeping late. So it's throwing off the whole um my my whole routine you know and um, i'm really struggling with that so it's giving me like less time for me and less time for me to do things because i have to focus on them so much so that's what i get worried about you know i go can i really do this um you know i want to do this ged is it going to be too overwhelming for me you know and i really want to get my ged that's something that i've been trying for years and it just seems like i can't accomplish that and i'm always hitting this this wall you know, and that's basically what's really stopping me, you know, because if I would have my GD, I, I know I can get further places, you know, because a lot of places ask for the GD. And then when, you know, I get kind of discouraged when I fill out applications that, oh, your GD. And then I'm like, what do, what do they need the GD for? I go, I already got all this experience. I'm like way over this experience, you know, because yes. I mean, if you're at home, you're basically doing the same thing. You're going to go do cleaning over there even more because if you're a mother, you know, you got all this experience coming out of you. You know what I'm saying? But I know they want their way, their qualifications, you know, stuff like that. So Et let cetera. me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Uh, Tanisha is on the line right now. And mm -hmm. she just did a workshop a, a couple of days ago on uh, continuing ed and their mm -hmm. ability to help with that. T, can you talk a little bit about uh, the GED program that they have? And I think it's for free, right? It's free? Um, I was going to say, I don't have much to say about it. Other uh -huh. than that, it's a program offered at the San Diego Continuing Education. Um, it should be for free. All the programs and trainings that they offer there are for free. What may mm -hmm. not be free is the actual tests that you need to oh, take. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, I, we can definitely, I would suggest that you just go to the San Diego Continuing Education website. You mean, okay. And, um, do you know how much the test is? I we can it. always we can always look at that later. Once you get to right. the training, we can always look mm -hmm. to see what the cost is going to be. You, you How much are part was... of one of my programs. So um, as part How long of the was power, the training? It, it's on you. It, it, it goes by oh, your it's self, by, it's self by you. Oh, so but do they give you like a requirement like you got to finish it by like three months or two months or or it's just how fast you go and yeah, I, I would suggest looking up the program and actually giving them a call directly to ask uh -huh. them the specific. Okay, all right. I can send you the email. I mean, I can send you the recording of that workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we recorded it. And so I'm not sure. Um, let me let me not promise without. Yeah, we probably second. did. And then what I can do is put the information in the chat from the okay. young man who spoke. And you can just e uh, like email him directly. Okay, great. And, thank you. I appreciate him. that. Great. Thank you. And while you're with the kids doing their, their studies, you could be doing your studies that way. That keeps puts them into a place where my mom's doing it, so let me do it too. And then yeah, you, you know that. Up, yeah, that's smart. And then if you set up a, a schedule where you all wake up at the same time to study, mm -hmm. then that opens you up for a little bit more time as well. Yeah, and it also helps them because... <clears throat> You know, you're giving, they're watching you do something positive. So they want to do it too. Right. And that's, and, that, that, yeah. And she, Thank just you. Put the, she just put the information on the, on the website right now. Okay. See, uh, I'm going to see if I can find it. Um, I'll follow up with you, Maria, on that and, and we'll plan it out. Um, do you guys know if they're still doing it virtual with the GED courses? Okay. I got it right here. Thank you. Yes. So I think they still are. I think he said they were. It's virtual, right? Yes. 
Okay. Maria, we, we can double check. I know you wanted to do it in person, but we can double check to see if they have something planned out that's going to be in person. So we'll and go for you, that. Maria, the high awesome. set will probably be Thank the you. best. Um, the high see, set I, I, feel, probably... I feel less stressful now. <laughs> and for you, Maria, the, the best uh, option for your GED testing would be the high set because of the, the math. high set. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's the one I tried taking at the adult school. You know how many times I went to the adult school? to try to do this GD like four times. I was so embarrassed looking at that man. He goes, you again? <laughs> hey, but I didn't you keep even trying. The fifth time. As long as you keep trying and, to, and, and you'll get it. You got it this time, all right? Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you. I have to get it this time. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, all, um, if there are no further questions, I don't see any in here. Uh, then uh, we were going to go ahead and end this particular workshop. Thank you all for showing up. We really appreciate it. And see you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Have a good day. You too.